Improving your home? Excavating for a new building? A new fence? A new pool? Video over. Please save. No matter how big or small, always call or click before you dig. It's a free request to have digging hazards marked. For more information, visit OntarioOneCall.ca. Hi, I am Paul Schaffman. Our next speaker is Jonathan Hoffler, who is SpaceX Vice President of Starlink and Commercial Sales. In this role, he leads business de development efforts for Starlink, commercial launch, and private human spaceflight endeavors. Hoffler joined SpaceX in 2007 and previously headed the company's business development efforts in North America, Middle East, and Asia, successfully expanding SpaceX customer base across the globe to include new launch customers in new regions and SpaceX entrants into the private astronaut sector. Hoffler received his Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the John Hopkins University, a Master's of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Southern California, and a degree in Technology Commercialization from USC's Marshall School of Business. He is also a graduate of the International Space University Space Studies Program. Prior to joining SpaceX, Hoffler worked at the Raytheon company as a senior mechanical engineer and designer on several satellite programs. He also serves on the Johns Hopkins University Mechanical Engineering Advisory Board. I'm supposed to take over now? Can you guys hear me? You can take over and we can hear you. Thanks, John. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you guys for, for having me. Um, uh, wanted to spend uh, my time here, a few minutes giving you an overview of where we are with Starlink as a program um, and as a company and as we, we expand out uh, across the globe. Uh, and then leave uh, a, a handful of minutes for uh, questions and answers because um, what we have is very exciting. I'm sure there's there's lots of questions. Um, so to, to kick it off, uh, for those of you who haven't heard about SpaceX or, or Starlink, um, uh, Starlink is SpaceX's program to bring high-speed, low-latency internet uh, across the globe. Um, uh, prior to Starlink, um, SpaceX has been uh, pioneering uh, advances in the launch and aerospace business. Um, uh, developing low-cost launch vehicles, um, most recently bringing uh, astronauts to space um, with the ultimate goal of making life multiplanetary. So uh, the, the goal of, of uh, bringing humans to Mars is, is in, our, in our sights and something that we're working very hard to, to do. Um, the Starlink program, um, which, which I'll talk a little bit about, um, is a constellation initially of uh, 1,440 satellites, um, in order to provide connectivity to um, the, the mid-latitude regions and then an additional set of cons uh, satellites to provide connectivity to the polar, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, to, to date, we've launched uh, over 1,500 satellites um, and have started our, what we're calling the Better Than Nothing Beta program, which provides uh, connectivity, and we've rolled out to a number of different countries, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and I'm just going through a bunch of slides and a bunch of pictures that we, we've already ha had to date. Um, so uh, the architecture is such that on, on orbit, we have uh, uh, thousands of satellites, uh, which act as pretty much the internet in the sky. And then on the ground, we have our uh, Starlink terminal, which you can uh, be anywhere on the globe, plug in, and five minutes later, you have access to, to high bandwidth, low latency global coverage. Um, to talk about why this is important, and, and I know that the folks on the call probably understand this um, as a pain point, especially in the last year with COVID, the access to quality internet um, is decides whether kids can learn or not learn, whether businesses can thrive or not thrive, um, and it's become a, uh, a necessary uh, pillar of, of our lives. Um, and uh, while a lot of places are connected with great fiber, uh, 3G, 4G, and 5G, 
there are a lot of places on the globe that don't have connectivity and the beauty of our architecture that's already deployed and activated is that we can provide that connectivity to anywhere on the globe. Um, here's a little quick picture. So uh, SpaceX is vertically integrated, um, which means that uh, not only do we build our own rockets, which is the, everything from the engines all the way up to the, the fairing at the top, um, which gives us uh, incredible access to space, um, but we also build our own satellites as well, and we're building our own ground infrastructure and user terminals. Um, in this picture here, you see a, a photo from space of a stack of 60 satellites being deployed from our Falcon 9 rocket. Um, and we deploy about 60 satellites about every two to three weeks in order to ramp up uh, the capability. And we've been doing this, wow, for the last year or so, a um, little bit less than a year, and uh, have an, an incredible architecture on orbit um, providing service. Um, the satellites are designed and manufactured in, in Seattle, uh, Washington, and um, we're producing them at a rate of about six satellites per day, uh, which is exciting. We're now in the process of switching over. We finished our, our, our base constellation um, and switching over to start um, deploy, building and deploying our next part, which is to service the high latitudes in polar regions, which the folks on the call would be probably very, very excited about uh, learning. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the ground system. So we spent a lot of time um, developing a system um, and a lot of energy and a lot of engineering to make something simple. Um, and it's not easy to make something simple. Um, and, and so the system that we came up with, and Elon was adamant about, you know, two instructions, you plug it in, and then you point it at the sky. And when that became too complicated, uh, we narrowed it down to, to one uh, instruction, which is plug it in. Um, and it has to have a, a good view of the sky and it will self-oriented. Um, what you're looking at here is, is the kit. Um, so on, on the left there is the Starlink antenna. It's about the size of a, of a large pizza, um, a little less than a, than a half a meter in diameter. It's a phased array antenna, which means once it's set in place that you're not moving um, the antenna isn't gimbling or moving to, to track satellites. It does it all electronically. So at any given point, this uh, satellite is sitting on your roof or your hospital or your school, um, tracking a number of different satellites that are going up overhead. Um, but what we designed it for was simplicity. Um, we, we, we don't want a large installer network. Um, and we want our... Uh, our mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers to be able to install this without any issue. Um, and certainly that's the vision and we're, we're continuously trying to make this uh, even easier to use. And um, having received this at, at my house, it's, it's, not, it's rare that you get excited to, to, get, it, to get internet um, or to get a modem um, or a Wi-Fi dish in, in the mail. And um, what we're seeing as we're deploying across the globe is that uh, people are, are excited to get online. Um, everything's included in our in our package. Um, so you get uh, the antenna, um, you get a, a Wi-Fi router, um, and, and it's set up. It's already pre-plugged in um, with all the cables. Literally, you plug it in. Five minutes later, um, you can get on your phone and find the uh, the Starlink um, uh, SSID and uh, log on, and and you're connected. Um, and it's, it is that simple. And we've been very successful in, in deploying this to date. Um, so talk a little bit about that. Um, so yeah, we've launched uh, over 1,500 satellites. We will continue to launch um, next to get um, the, the higher latitudes in place, uh, which we're targeting to be online uh, by the end of this year, the higher latitudes in, in, in polar regions. Um, we've rolled out um, and in the six countries to date actually might be a, a little bit dated. Um, so US and Canada, obviously, we've rolled out to Germany, UK, Australia, New Zealand, um, and there are another dozen or so countries coming online very shortly. Um, the best part is that it's active. Um, we're, we're getting stories. If, if you guys follow Reddit or Twitter or any of the, the blogospheres uh, about people who are getting connected, they're thrilled to be um, finally part of the new economy and being being connected and one of the things that that we we focus on um is connecting 
we say connecting the unconnected. Um, but in some of the stories, one of the, the, the first ones that we did in Canada was um, uh, uh, one of the tribes and, and you know, their, their response was, you know, we were, we were, what they said, we're swimming, uh, we're paddling upstream without a paddle. We're going to be left behind. Um, and, and if it wasn't for Starlink, um, we would have been left behind. And they put together some pretty amazing videos. I, uh, I was the Bacanjikum tribe. I would uh, encourage you guys to go look at the video that they put together for that. Um, and in addition to the, 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 the deployment in those in those tribe in, in those regions we have thousands of customers across canada um and we start we still are in beta but people are are getting incredible speeds um you know 50 to 150 we've seen people even get 300 in some cases 400 megabits per second which is unprecedented for folks um in some of these regions which is exciting um just some 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 stories that, that we've already done to date so we've connected a couple schools there was um last year there were a bunch of fires in california and in pacific northwest uh, where schools were just decimated they reached out um and through various donors and sponsorships we were able to get them connected um, in a matter of weeks uh the the picture you see kind of to the to the right of the student there that's the pakanjikum tribe um and uh, again um i encourage you to watch that video we have a couple other tribes here in the u.s and then the, on the pictures on the far right is, are the, some of the disaster recovery um, that we've done. Uh, we had some fire departments reach out to us uh, for their forward operating bases and said, I, I need to get connected, um, it, partly as communications for their ops teams, um, but partly for, for the towns and the communities just to get back to normal. They have to file insurance claims and email pictures to uh, loved ones. They, you know, Being connected is, is said it's an essential service at this point. Um, and and we've just been very excited to be able to play a part in, in some of that during our during our beta phase. Um, that's a, high, a super super high level overview. I know I didn't get into into a, a whole lot of detail about the architecture, but I think the the the, the main point is that we are operational um, and we're activating um, cells weekly and trying to get more and more people online we've gotten a huge amount of outreach can you get my town online can you get my municipality online and we are working on it it's it's limited numbers to start um but every week every couple of weeks we're launching more satellites which put more and more capacity online um and we're working as fast as we can to get the, the families the students schools hospitals um and businesses connected um with that, I guess I, I would open it up to 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 questions if there if there are any, um, and uh, talk more about it. Thanks, Jonathan. It's Mac. Uh, we have we have a couple of questions coming in, and there's more coming in as as we speak. Uh, the first one is: uh, Is Starlink prepared to work with a municipality to deploy several thousand connections to serve our residents? We would like to discuss a large group buy funded by a municipality. Is that something that Starlink would be interested in? We are certainly interested in it. Um, um, the, the, what's the path to getting um, Starlink and connectivity into people's hands? What's the path of least resistance? So it depends on, it depends on the municipality. Um, we've worked with a bunch of them. Uh, we have this con concept of, of an angel account where the municipality will fund the hardware and the service for one or two years um, and in which case we'll activate um, their cell and put them uh, you know to not to the front of the line but to to um, as we evaluate what cells to turn on so um, the, the constellation um, while it can put down internet in every location it can't put it down everywhere at the same time so we have to pick and choose which pockets for now of where we provide connectivity, and that's and that's limited. So when you say you want to connect um, tens of thousands um, initially for for what we're doing, that's that's um, in one municipality. Uh, we have to look at that solution to see what the time frame is in order to connect those folks. Um, uh, but but certainly you can reach out to us. But what we've actually found is is we have. Um, online, you go to starlink.com. If it's available, we're going to ship it and send it to you. 
Um, we, we challenge the municipalities to, to work quickly. It's great if we can do what we call an angel account and we can turn on some cells that were not previously turned on. Um, but also encourage them to look at if, if they're looking to fund and do some sort of rebate program, is that the path of least resistance to get um, to get internet into, into folks' hand? We are not necessarily holding back uh, capacity for folks in, in different regions. Um, but what we have online, like we're, we're super, we're oversaturated with demand at the moment, which is, which is a great, great problem to have. And we're trying to figure out what the best way is to service as many people as possible. It's a, it's a long way to answer is, is yes, we're, we're looking to work municipalities. The whole concept of, of bulk buy, um, um, want to make sure that we're doing the best for, for the end user. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, can you um, remind uh, the uh, participants what the cost of um, the initial setup is in Canada? Sure. I didn't prepare my Canadian exchange rate. Um, you're not going to quote me on this, but it's it's 4.99 in U.S. dollars, which I think is 6.29 Canadian for the hardware, and that includes the dish, um, the power supply, and the the Wi-Fi modem. So everything you need to get online, um, and then the monthly service uh, is in the United States is 99 dollars, and, and I believe that's 1.29 uh, Canadian per month. Okay. Yeah, uh, Canadian dollar is doing a little bit better this week, so uh, okay. we're, we're doing pretty good. Um, the uh, and Do you know what that uh, compares to if you've got um, um, internet provision to your house by another provider? Is it uh, is your is Starlink's monthly amount more or less? Do you have an, a, a grasp of that in Canada? It, and it really depends. Um, you know, we, we've talked with folks that, you know, if you're in a, in a metropolitan area and you're getting fiber at $50 a month, like that's great. That'll be a, a, great, a great service for you. Uh, folks that are, are, are way out from the metropolitan areas, they, they could pay up to $200, $250 a month for a trickle of internet. Um, and, and so this is, this is going to massively increase their ability to communicate. The, the one thing I didn't dwell on is, is the, the high bandwidth, low latency. Uh, till now, all satellite communications for, you know, for broadband have been done through geostationary orbit, which is at 35,000 kilometers away from Earth. Our constellation is at 500 kilometers, so 70 times closer uh, to Earth, which means that when you're doing Skype calls or video conferencing, um, there's no delay. You don't have um, a one second delay. And if you're trying to do telemedicine, you're trying to communicate with loved ones, we've been there when you have a bad connection, um, it's really frustrating. And so um, I, I think that, that we're, what we're really focused on is having a, an incredible service for the customers and the folks, especially outside the metropolitan areas in Northern Canada um, and even, even middle Canada don't have a whole lot of options for, for great internet. Once Starlink moves past the beta test or beta stage, uh, will the cost of the equipment come down? And then also too, is it, will the cost of the equipment come down when you have more subscribers? Um, I mean, we're, uh, the, key, the key is to continue to get the, the, the cost of the equipment down. Um, right now, we're, we're, and we've been public about this, the cost of the equipment is a lot more than, than what we're selling it for. So we're, we're taking that at, at a loss for now, but we're working hard to bring the cost down. And certainly um, as, we, as we bring it down, we'll, we'll pass along those savings because that'll get more folks online. Um, and so I think that answers your question, right? Yep, it does, yep. Um, many are concerned about the number of satellites in the sky, no, uh, about possible debris and, and, and coming back to earth. Not, and this isn't directed just at Starlink, uh, sure. but uh, satellites in general. So how many, it can be too many, or is the sky so vast that people should not be concerned? Well, certainly it's something that we, we take very seriously. So like uh, not only is our Starlink business like based in, in low Earth orbit, but, but our launch business travels through low Earth orbit all the time. Our, our, our goal of making life multiplanetary is contingent upon uh, having a safe passage to, to Mars and, and beyond. And so our, our, 
our fundamental approach to this is that we have to protect um, we have to protect the the space uh, from debris and, and and other sorts of um, pollution. Um, and so we um, space is pretty vast. Um, I mean, I know the numbers seem uh, high when you talk about thousands of satellites, but you know when you compare the size of these and and you know the amount of area that's up there, you know it, it, it's a, space is a big place. Um, and, and but on top of that, you know, using using our constellation to do autonomous tracking and to do autonomous maneuvering uh, is something that we um, have implemented and are continuing to do. So it, people have a, a right to be aware of it, um, and this is why we're not shying away from the conversation because it's a very important one to have. Um, but I also don't believe that there's a cause for concern. Um, I, I think the, the community at large is looking at it and, and attentive to it. Um, but everyone that we've spoken to on all the different LEO players um, generally have the same responsible code of ethics to, to make safe a space place to a safe place to, to work and play. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, next question is in regards to the uh, the size of the of the satellite itself that's uh, mm -hmm. going to be affixed to your roof or or beside your home. And then also too, is it um, what's the um, uh, uh, how, what's the impact that snow that we have a lot, an abundance of in Northern Ontario, maybe a little bit more than you get in Southern California. Uh, what's bit. the impact of that? Sure. Yeah. And 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 this is something um, uh, that that we don't take. Uh, certainly, it's been part of the design criteria. So there's a couple of different fun fun features within within the um, within the antenna. The antenna has heating elements in, in, inside of it um, in order to detect and melt snow. It also has the ability to have a dump feature where there, there are current actuators in the antenna that um, are, are designed for initial setup, um, but there's also a way to detect um, high moisture and, and um, uh, snow content in order to dump the snow off. So we, we've actually tested it. There's some great pictures on Reddit. You know, we're, while not Northern Canada, but the, the team designing this is in Seattle, uh, where, where they do get a fair amount of snow as well. So we're, just because I'm in Los Angeles doesn't mean I, I don't know and appreciate snow. Uh, do you have an idea about what the uh, stage of the beta test is in and when do you anticipate it ending so that it can be expanded? I mean, we, we, the ultimate goal is to have a great experience for our customers. Um, calling it beta or not beta is is somewhat, in my mind, irrelevant. We we may get rid of the beta tag at some point, but we're not. Um, we're still learning and adapting the system to make it better and better, more uptime. Um, a large part of that is to, to set expectations. You know, will, will you have drop calls? Will, will internet go out? Um, and, and we're now counting those outages in, in you know, seconds. Um, and, and so, but, but getting a, a robust network and once we're comfortable with that, we will remove the, the beta tag. Um, but the folks that are getting the service, it's not like they're gonna get a dramatically different service once the beta tag is removed. Um, it's just, we're, we're every day improving the service to get it uh, uh, more and more availability. So there's no uh, issue in regards to the CRTC. You've got, uh, you can expand uh, as much as you wish now in Canada uh, without uh, any more approvals from the CRTC. I don't know what the CRTC is. Uh, that's uh, the Canadian Regulatory uh, Communications Regulatory Commission. Um, I, you know, I think that there's always more advocacy to be needed uh, from a gateway standpoint. We can service a good portion of of Canada from our US gateways, um, um, but we're looking to get more and more access um, so we can serve more people. Uh, and so to the extent that the folks uh, on the call are, are want us to continue developing more and more capability and servicing more and more people, certainly an openness to have more gateways in Canada um, and, and far reaching north would be appreciated. Okay. Uh, when do you anticipate, when does uh, Starlink uh, anticipate that the uh, um, uh, the phone portion will be coming online, and what will be the cost associated with that? 
a good question. Actually, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, right now you can make Skype and phone calls uh, from, you know, just over IP. Um, and so for folks looking to get connected, um, that shouldn't be a barrier. Um, uh, where it actually connects to your your home phone, like I'm, I'm not aware of, of of the timeline for that. Okay. Uh, and then, folks, uh, we had this question earlier during the uh, Telsat presentation this morning. Folks are often concerned with the health implications of 5G emissions. How does this factor into the type of uh, your type of system? Does this still exist as a potential concern for citizens? And if so, any insights on the health implications? of 5G. I, and I wish I, if, if I was a little bit more prepared for this, I asked the same question uh, to, to one of our, our technical folks and and, I, and um, they laughed almost at it because they said the, the, our emissions compared to the, the 5G code is like some, you know, numbers of order of magnitude different. Okay. Um, and, and so I don't have the specific data on it. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, no, 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 that's fine. Um, can you just walk us through uh, for for the people on that uh, that aren't a part of the beta test? If you can walk them through, um, um, you know, once they sign up and they they would like to receive your system, um, do they have to be techie or how how difficult is it to get the, your system set up? Yeah, um, and, that, and that's a great question. This is where we, we love feedback. Um, it's designed to be as untechy as you need to be. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, we set up for what we call instant gratification. So you, the box arrives uh, on your doorstep. You can put it out on your lawn, plug it in, and you have internet. Um, it's literally a five-minute process, um, and um, there's no you don't need to know about IP addresses and um, any sort of configurations in, in that regard. Um, uh, once you plug it in, it actually pops up. Uh, once you connect to the, the Starlink network on your phone, it pops up. Um, you know, set 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 your password, um, and that's it. It's it's a one step uh, one step pass, uh, process. Um, further, if folks want to um, put it on their roof or uh, put it somewhere else um, where they might need a ladder or or some additional help, then then they can do that. But it's not it's not necessary. Folks have left it out on their front lawn. Uh, for months uh, before before they want to put it on their roof, um, and certainly when people get excited to to try it out, they can't wait to put it on their roof. They just want to connect it. Um, the, the the big piece is that you need a clear view of the sky. Um, you know, so so folks that are in heavily wooded areas, um, there's challenges with trees and and buildings if you're next to a building. So um, there is an app which the, the Starlink app which helps guide you through placement of it. Um, but generally speaking, you want to be able to look up and see a, a good portion of the sky unobstructed. If there are obstructions, um, it just means that you may have a, a dropout from time to time. Uh, as a satellite passes through that tree, it will not be able to, to communicate with the, with the satellite. Um, but the satellites are moving overhead all the time in a, in a huge mesh network. And so if it's not picking up that si satellite, likely it'll pick up another satellite. Um, but certainly to, to get the best service possible, you would want to, um, to have a clear view of the sky. Sounds easier to set up than it took me to get registered for this Zoom call this morning. It, it's super easy. Like, it's excitingly easy. Like, I, I can't, I, I, again, you don't really get happy and giddy about getting internet, but plugging it in and then communicating with, with, with satellites flying overhead and that, that it works is pretty remarkable. Uh, Jonathan, when you're in Northern Ontario and you don't get any satellite or any, uh, uh, don't have internet at all, uh, it, people, lots of people are getting excited about Starlink and the possibilities for Northern Ontario. So uh, uh, just ju that's just a personal comment, sorry. Um, let, me, let me actually follow up on, on one thing you said, Mike. Um, right now when you're ordering, so um, uh, folks will, will go on online, starlink.com, you put in your address, um, you place an order. If it's available, it'll be shipped out directly, um, uh, you know, as we get inventory. Um, if not, you can, you'll be placed on, on a wait list. And, and as soon as there's capacity opening up, um, depending on the country, I think Canada, we just, we ship it to you. We bill you and we ship it to you as soon as it's available. Um, and 
it, it should be as simple as that. And, and I know folks are are probably eager and probably a number of people on, online have already signed up and are, and are waiting. Um, and, and just ask for your, your continued patience. We're, we're getting as many people online as, as we can. We're, we're at, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of orders, um, tens of thousands of, of folks online, um, and we're, we're growing pretty quickly. Perfect. Uh, the next one is, uh, have you addressed the reflection issue of satellites uh, for astronomy viewers? That's a great question. Yes, we have. Um, one of the uh, one of the great things about SpaceX and being vertically integrated is we move incredibly fast. So when this was first addressed, brought up by the uh, by the um, the astronomers, literally the next batch that was going out a week and a half later, we'd already done some mitigate mitigation, um, and and we can try di different things. So uh, we can spray paint it black <laughs> for sensitivity. Right now, the the solution that we settled on is um, a reflective cover. And it was, again, it's, it's something that was, we went through a couple of different design iterations. Um, and, and to date, you, you, can, you can see the satellites at times during ascent. Um, and, and so what that means is when we actually launch the satellites, we launch them into a very low orbit, 300 kilometers or so. Um, actually, sorry, below 300 kilometers, somewhere, I think 200 to 300 kilometers. Um, and we do that for a couple of reasons. One, as you mentioned about the, the, the debris mitigation, is if there are any issues with the satellites, you know, right out of the gate, uh, right after launch, um, those satellites will burn up and re-enter within uh, a week or two. Um, once we've established that they're healthy, and um, we'll, we'll we'll put them on a path towards um, raising their their altitude to the operational 550 kilometers. So a lot of times you'll see that in, in some of the pictures on online or whatever, you see the, the, they call them the SpaceX train or the Starlink train of them. And that's just during their transit phase um, that, that you see them. And, but once they're uh, operational, um, uh, you know, we're doing all we can to, to, to mitigate that. And certainly if there are folks on the phone with concerns, please bring them up. Um, we're, ha we're happy to address them. Um, but I think we've gotten to a really good place uh, with our relationship with the astronomers. Okay. Um, the equipment that you send uh, to the house, Jonathan, do you need an electrical outlet to connect the tower to, or your 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 dish to, uh, or your antenna to, or is, is it um, uh, once you've brought it in and attached it inside your house? That they're just wondering about elect uh, ha having to have an electric electrical outlet outside for the system. So you so the. Um, uh, we run power over Ethernet to the to the Starlink dish. So there's a roughly 100 foot of cable, and at the at one end of the cable is the Starlink dish, and the other end of that cable is our power supply. Um, and then that you know you have to be within five or six feet of an outlet from there. Uh, so so most people will route that um, uh, you know down their roof um, into the house and then plug it in. Um, so so there's not necessarily a need for an out side uh, plug, but you can also use it with an outside plug, um, assuming that you're using proper safety codes, et cetera. Um, is there a- but, uh, right, but just, to, just to clarify, there's only one cable. There's not a power cable. There's not an ethernet cable. There's okay. one cable, power over ethernet that goes up um, and, and that's what we use. Okay, that's, that's perfect. Thank you yeah. uh, for that clarification. Um, if somebody had further questions of Starlink, um, and they've ordered, uh, they have a point of contact. Do they, if they're a customer, do they have a point of contact if they do have questions about whether it's set up or, or, or they, um, a, an issue that they're having, they do obviously have a point of contact, correct? Yeah, Inside so we have, a, we have a full customer support uh, operations team. Um, right now, um, you know, we're running 24 seven um, here, you know, working through issues. It's done through a customer portal. So once you have a system um, and signed up, you get a username and password. Um, and once you're in there, you can, you can request tickets and request help. Um, and they usually get back to you within um, either a couple hours or 24 hours, I think is the, the end target no later then. Perfect. Um, thank you. Um, if you I, had more, sorry, I, I, I'm going to add a little a little plug here too. So what most of we talked about is is, is consumer and residential. Um, in the next couple of days, we're going to be rolling out our uh, business service, 
um, and that's to address you know small, medium, and even large businesses that that need connectivity in, in certain areas. Um, so so keep an eye out for for that. Um, and if there are folks that you know want to connect, you know their chain of hardware supply stores or their um, you know, said hospitals, uh, schools, all that goes through kind of different than the, than the residential ones. The, the, the current online platform is, is strictly for, for residential, but we're going to be pivoting uh, to add the, the business services on top of that. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, perfect. So actually, that brings me right into the next question. Uh, if I'm, if um, there's a, um, a cluster of homes, say 10 homes in an area, it's, it's, it's maybe not even a part of a municipality. Mm -hmm. Would uh, a small group of 10 homes be able to kind of cluster together to buy a package um, uh, together? No, it's not intended to be shared amongst households. So okay. it's, it's one Starlink per household. Um, that's the intent. Okay. Now, now, each of them can 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 band together and they want to try to activate their cell and do some sort of angel account. It gets a little, little more complicated. Um but no, the not the intent is that well is that they don't share it amongst multiple households. Okay, thank you. Um, once um, SpaceX and Starlink have more satellites in the air, um, will that um, uh, benefit? Considering there's lots of trees in Northern Ontario, uh, and sometimes to get uh, a, a direct line of sight to the sky um, is sometimes difficult. Um, um, especially the, the further remote you get, uh, will you see that um, once you have more uh, satellites in the in the stop in the sky, will that uh, reduce the amount of direct access to the sky that you need? I mean, absolutely. Um, I, you should always try to get as much direct access to the sky. Um, right now, we want every dish to see uh, one, maybe two satellites. The goal is two satellites. In view at any given time, a primary and a redundant, and, and these things are moving, you know, across the sky, you know, five minutes out of whack, um, and so they're, they're constantly picking up um, different satellites, um, and and as we add more, it just adds uh, availability and redundancy to it. Um, but th those folks that are looking to 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 install it, um, I, I do, do want to emphasize, like a heavily wooded area is going to be challenging. You should put it up on a pole or in a location where where it's best served. Okay. Well, Jonathan, uh, you did uh, very well. You answered everybody's question, uh, which was which was good. I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, I know that you have to be leaving the country um, very shortly, so we do appreciate you taking uh, your time. Do you have any final comments for for those that are viewing uh, this uh, today's presentation? Uh, just that. Um, uh, we're excited to provide you connectivity. I'm excited for you guys to 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 try it out and and really see all, all the hard work that we put into to making this excellent product that that is operational. Um, your continued support, whether it's to the municipalities, through legislation, just being a, a vocal advocate of what we're trying to do, I think we're doing a, a great thing, and um, we'll get you connected as soon as we can. And thank you. Well, thanks, Jonathan, for for joining us today. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. We are pleased that you were able to join us this afternoon and provide us a glimpse into the workings of a SpaceX company. Starlink is a real game changer for those of us in Northern and rural Ontario. We will continue to monitor your successes and we offer our assistance if required moving forward. Miller Waste is a multidisciplinary waste management organization. We're a diversion company, not a landfill company. And I think that's a, that's a really strong point to be made. We focus on recycling and also on diverting other waste streams from landfill. Our company can be defined into four basic services. One is collection, waste collection. We also process waste. We process organics. We process recyclables. We design and build. Uh, large integrated waste management facilities. So these are large facilities that would take recycling products and divert them. 
we're committed to the sustainability of this business to make sure that this business continues to have a life long, long after us.